there has been a nuclear accident in the Soviet Union and the Soviets have admitted that it happened. An official announcement from the Council of Ministers. There has been an accident at the Chernobyl atomic power station. One of the atomic reactors was damaged. The consequences of the accident are being taken care of. Help is being given to the victims of the accident. Huge amounts of radiation. Almost certainly the uh, most severe accident that has ever taken place in uh, the short history of civilian nuclear power. What Chernobyl did to my country was shocking. Hundreds of thousands of people were displaced. The economy collapsed and medical services were overwhelmed. Ireland was one of the first countries in the world to respond to this tragedy. In Belarus, after Chernobyl, thousands of children were born with genetic defects and were abandoned by parents who couldn't cope mentally or financially. Children were in straight jackets, children were tied to radiators, um, children were in shocking, appalling conditions. There were more children dying than were surviving. When I come in the first time to the orphanage, Everything was very bad. No mattress, no nappies, no anything. Children sleep on the, uh, on the floor. These distressing images continue to haunt the world today. And 33 years on, A.D. Roach's Chernobyl Children International continues to be the world's greatest aid and advocacy agency on behalf of the victims of Chernobyl. And let us from this hallowed hall say to them once more, you are not forgotten, you are not irrelevant, you are not peripheral. It's over three decades since the reactor at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded, causing thousands of deaths and widespread contamination. 32 years after the accident, the people may be gone, but the fallout continues. The fallout, RTE News reported last autumn, continues to affect up to 7 million people. In Belarus, where the worst radiation fell, CCI is a global leader in the provision of medical and healthcare facilities. Um, we're just taking a look at the pressure point here, which is much improved actually from the last time we were here. His head weighs 16 kilos, uh, which is an extraordinary weight for his little body to carry. And everything that gives Ilya comfort has come from the generosity of the people of Ireland. In war-torn Ukraine last Christmas, a team of cardiac surgeons funded by CCI flew into a frontline hospital to save the lives of children born with Chernobyl heart. We're here to save these children's lives from the terrible heart disease that they've suffered. You know, none of this would be possible without any Roshans Chernobyl Children's International and the support of the people of Ireland to support her projects. This is a fantastic project. Imagine our doctors can save the life of a child for just one thousand euro. Now we have saved the lives of thousands of innocent young children and these are children who have become the third generation of Chernobyl's victims. Here in the Chernobyl region of Belarus, Vesnova Orphanage, once a grim children's mental asylum, has been transformed into the country's most renowned childcare centre. This is Vasa and this is Karina, two children that are in need of 24 hour round the clock medical care, which their parents simply couldn't afford to give to them. They're handed over to the state because they are disabled because they're not able to look after themselves. So we're trying to retrain them so that they can go back into society and actually live an ind full independent life, which is what they deserve to do. Another thing that strikes me here is that the sheer effort that children with mental and physical disabilities make to gain the skills that could one day help them towards the dream of independent living. 
a pioneering life skills programme at Vesnova, costing €135,000 a year, has now become the launch pad to new lives for abandoned children with physical and mental disabilities. AD and the team have been spending a lot of time with teachers, with different systems, um, fighting for their rights in the government as well, and find a way for them to live these independent lives. Opening homes of hope across Belarus to empty orphanages and to place children with foster families has been another of CCI's huge success stories in recent years. Dotted all over small parts of Belarus, we have bought 30 houses and of course the whole idea is to populate these houses with children. Children who have suffered physical, sexual abuse, uh, children really that come from shocking conditions but we find loving, loving parents, foster parents, and in each home of hope you'll have anything from eight to ten children and it becomes like a natural family. More than 25,500 Chernobyl children have come to Ireland for rest and recuperation since 1991. Will you please welcome the President of Ireland, Michael. President Higgins was the first head of state to support A.D. Roach's UN initiative to have April the 26th formally designated as International Chernobyl Disaster Remembrance Day. The tragedy of Chernobyl prompted a remarkable spirit of human solidarity across the world, but I think particularly so here in Ireland. We became one of the very first countries in the Kiel that responded to the humanitarian crisis by providing support for and meeting the needs of thousands of Chernobyl victims. Since 1986, Ireland has provided €105 million Euro worth of humanitarian and medical aid to the victims of Chernobyl. It has, in the words of President Higgins, been a truly extraordinary example of a country being moved by the impulses of its heart. It takes more than €1 million Euro to keep the torch of hope burning brightly and we are determined never to fail or never to forget the victims of Chernobyl. I will not forget you. I will not forget you. I will not forget you.